Right, so we're we're rolling. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're with Chris Broderick of the Singing Loins. Um, there's a new album. It's called Thirteen Moon Songs from Merry Hell, and uh, we're going to have a chat with Chris about that. Um, so the Singing Loins are back. <laughs> back with a recording. Back with a recording. Not, not on a live. Phone, yeah, sadly, yeah, no. yeah. So uh, how did how did that come about? Because it's been six years. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I wanted to hear the next Singing Lloyd's album. <laughs> it's Fair enough. Simple, yeah, it's as simple <laughs> as that. So I approached them and said, come on, have we got anything left yeah. in us? We were very satisfied with the, the last, what we thought was going to be the last album, the, the penultimate album, yeah. um, Here on Earth. Yeah. And I wouldn't have wanted to get back if we couldn't have matched that. Yeah. Um, but I, I just contacted them and said, do you want to try... Um, Try some more songs, and they'd been working on stuff. Yeah. And um, sent me their ideas. Some, some just kind of s scratchy guitar idea with, without much form. Mm. Some that they'd actually been kind of working on at home, sort of home recording stuff. Yeah. Which people do these days, I understand. <laughs> so and so, so some were layered up. Some were multi-track, three or four instruments, and you know. And with um, some with kind of arrangement ideas, yeah. And as usual, the music inspired me, so I, I got writing, and that's the way I prefer to do it. I think I probably mentioned that last time we spoke. Mm -hmm. For the last fifteen, probably twenty years now, I've responded to the music. I used to write kind of. So they just had pure music, they had, no so, words. Yeah. Well, they may. I don't know. <laughs> they may have had their own. They may have been forming songs and took their. Uh, top lines off, took the vocals off. I don't know. Okay. I've got a feeling some were like that. We didn't discuss that too much. But some were just literally chord structure ideas or yeah. some kind of lovely guitar mm. riff or something. And uh, it got me inspired. I didn't have anything in mind at all. We just I just wanted to respond to the music. And the words started flowing. And we mm. wrote it quite quickly, about three months probably overall. Yeah. It was actually written a year ago. It was written by last August, but then okay. lots of kind of stuff. It's quite complicated. But yeah, then, yeah. A record and um, sorting all that side of stuff out. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's the same kind of process as before. Okay. All right. Um, how, how are you aware of how it's gone down so far? The record. Um, we've had some. Lovely feedback, but it's it's overall it's quite quiet because it's um what have we got we've got Facebook to announce it that's basically about yeah, it yeah. and a few odds and ends like this yeah. so not many people know it's out <laughs> but but those that have heard it they, yeah. they've kind of done the journey with us because it's the lines have come a long way since a uh, one acoustic guitar and a mm. tambourine and a voice yeah and um, and this is full full band we had um, a couple of guests with us playing. Mm. Um, and it's a full band sound, most of it. Yeah. Because um, I, I was I was thinking that you know um, when I when I've spoken to you previously, you talked about sort of defying expectations. Sometimes you you know you, you're often described as the, the the trash folk band. Oh yeah. And then you you know for for here on earth, you threw in some bassoons and clarinets and things and. Mm. Well, well, that's not the singing loin, surely, yeah, but it dirty was. Guitars, it was, yeah, yeah and dirty mm. guitars. And here you've got you've got electronica, you've got uh, a, a fuller rock sound. You've got all kinds of stuff, sort of dancing. Drum around. machines, in drum places. machines. Yeah, the first couple of tracks have drum machines, and I thought, what yeah. is this? Well, the first though. Yeah. <laughs> oh right, yeah. It's weird. The ones you probably think are drum machines are not. Oh okay. But um, so um, the still at sea. Still all at sea, yeah. Still all at sea, yeah. That's the machine, yeah. yeah. Some, we just, uh, some they'd obviously been playing around with. Their, this is how, how the recordings came to me, okay. with the drum machine on, and I just said, well, leave it. Mm. it it's, it's, you know, that's that's kind of, that suits what, what we're sort of doing. Yeah. But there's only about two or three bits of drum machine, and where, we've, what, where we really wanted the, 
the drum machine, we just left it in because yeah. you know. I see, yeah, yeah. It, it kind of suits that yeah. that style of, of yeah. that particular song. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So I don't know what their plans were. We never discussed it. But, yeah. but and I don't think they played each other's pieces of music to each other. Mm. I think I think they their own. I don't think they played their own pieces of music <laughs> to each other. Right. So it was uh, quite a a separate experience. Well, it was, and they all kind of. I mean, mm. you know, it's um, via the internet and everything. So they'd send me digital downloads and I'd kind of well I couldn't record vocals here I didn't I, I know you can but I don't know mm. how to so then I put demo vocals on at Rob's house so we met at Rob's house yeah and just recorded onto a um, straight onto a computer mm. just the demo some of that made this yeah as well because but although most of the vocals I redid at Jim's at Ranscombe okay same as usual because I actually like recording I love that process yeah I love the extra energy you get when there are strangers there and yeah. equipment rather than just kind of yeah. ponce around someone's kitchen. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So um thirteen moon songs from Merry Hell. Yeah. Moon the, the moon element I think just I immediately thought of madness. Is would you say that there was a hint um, of madness about the album? Probably there is. I was just I mean, I, as soon as I start doing, putting lyrics to music, I tend to get, I see it's, everything is visual, so I get the overall picture yeah. straight away. And this was, these songs were emerging from red into blue, if you like, from Mary Hell up to the moon. And okay. the moon, if the moon is symbolic in this, it's, um, what's the song? Oh, there's a gorgeous song in there. It's the moon I feel sorry for yeah. because you, you know, she's That's listening right. to all our problems. That's right. So yeah. in, in this, yeah, kind of in, in the theme of this album, that's exactly right. Yeah, it's, it's the moon soaking up all the broken hearted love songs and becoming mm. saturated and sinking into a an unfathomable lake, which is what the, the kind of lyrics were. So the, the last time we met the moon, because I, I used the moon and the crow quite a lot symbolically. Yeah. The last time we met the moon on here on Earth, she was riding the ocean into St Ives Harbour. Yeah. Very powerful uh, was this in this case. Yeah, I think she might have just about had enough of us. <laughs> and she grew fat and sank. <laughs> but it's kind of it's it's like here on Earth was talking about travel mm -hmm. to a great extent. The songs on that album. Yeah, and this album is where we went and what we've brought back. <laughs> right. Well, okay. Well, that twat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is a concept album. It's a concept. It's a concept. No, it's not. It's not a concept album. But there's there are themes but and, and the themes a, and yeah. as soon as you brought it up, I have to tell yeah. you what's going on in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, because the, there's the sort of the standard loins theme, or, or maybe it's it's your theme of um, a big-hearted compassion for the world. I guess it, confusion and compassion and yeah the underdog yeah interesting underdogs of course yeah because um, there's um, lovely people <coughs> yeah yeah describing yeah. all these yeah. really fragile mm. people going through absolute hell mm. and you just say yeah I saw people. it as a kind of train yeah. journey okay almost and just looking at characters and, and what might be going on beneath their um, yeah surface appearance. Yeah. He's jumping Friday. If the weather's wrong, all his mates will say they thought he was strong. Love.
So yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you contrast that with um, this one, which yeah. is like this really cynical, horrible Gestapo stomp. Um, person just pointing out all all those lovely people and saying, "Get rid of them." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. so it's um, people like Trump, people like that, you know. How much do you feel that uh, the current sort of political climate influenced this album? <laughs> well, it could, yeah, I mean, it could, the, the Bre all the Brexit, the, the fallout and hatred in this country, you know, because of the Brexit thing is, that had to be going, going in there. The, the, the kind of, the, the other theme, how, how many themes can it have? The other <laughs> thing that was concerning me and has always concerned me is, misinterpretation, misunderstanding, lack of communication, and there's a lot of that, distinct references to white noise and then hearing white noise in, for instance, um, over there, yeah, which is like the end of the world to me, there's kind of, that song is kind of, I, visually it was two mountain tops with a couple of families this side, a couple of families that side, Okay, they need to get together yeah and procreate if nothing else <laughs> but they will not listen and, and yeah and the one on the left talking speakers uh, and the one on the left is deliberately refusing to hear what the one on the right is mm. saying that's yeah. not left and right politically by the way that's yeah, just, just, a, just physically just the sonic waves yeah, but, yeah. Uh, and it's the end of the world because they, they just will not listen and, and that's it and it, the music kind of fades out with this white noise going Yeah. And um, and that's kind of where we're at, I think. No one listening to anyone or... Yeah, yeah. Or just stuck in our own vacuum. Mm. Yeah. I guess I took that one as um, an, an issue like about asylum seeking and, and that kind of thing. Well, yes, of course, it's all mm. it's universal, hopefully, and... And you find your own specifics mm. in it. The per what what's personal? Yeah, you know if if it's you know or if it's personal, which it kind of is. Yeah, hopefully you get the generalisation out of it. But but people are going to interpret the songs differently. Yeah, and that's absolutely fine. Mm. over there Weird and disgusting over there So vicious and suspicious over there They are hateful over there We find them guilty over there The, the first we heard of this new uh, this new album was the release of uh, Your Aerials Bent, mate, mm -hmm. uh, which came with a, a fantastic video. Was that you? Your your daughter created that video. Yeah, it was, was me that? and Katie. Me and Katie. Oh, on yeah. here, you'll recognise the coffee stains. <laughs> the animation was done on that. Too. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> <laughs> um. Because that was a stylistically, that was a complete gear change. It sounded like compared to the last we'd heard from from here on earth. It was I like it was, yeah, it was yeah. quite quite poppy. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There was a bit of electronica in there. It, it was um, very upbeat sounding, um, but yeah, there was this again compassion for someone who's 
not quite got it together, but is is trying his yeah. trying his best. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, the title weirdly came. Um, I stayed with some friends on a we stayed in this holiday place um, last summer, and I took my old DAB radio along because mm -hmm. I can't sleep so I was playing a little bit of that. And the aerial happens to be completely bent like that. Yeah. And I was just walking through carrying the scene. My mate said, your aerial's bent, mate. And I thought, ooh, ooh, ooh. That's, that sounds like a, what a, what a beautiful insult. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, yeah, so that's where it all came from. Mm. So I thought, well, that's a lovely way of saying, um, you know, about someone who's kind of misunderstood. <laughs> but not, um, yeah, not kind of making himself very clear. Mm. And... Um, yeah. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. guitar all over it is kind of sputnicky now that was already some of that was already there mm -hmm. and he added to it after I'd done the vocals and understood where the song was going what it was about mm -hmm. and he created, he's created this lovely sputnicky thing which you would call electronic but it's not exactly it's all played guitar mm -hmm. and it's real drums on that one mm -hmm. but um, certainly probably I think we always were poppy always mm -hmm. had a pop sensibility mm -hmm. and um and we've never strayed all that far from verse chorus, middle eight verse chorus. Mm. When we do, it's got to be worthwhile, and we do. Yeah. But we've always had a pop sensibility, and I've tried to make stuff as melodic as possible, mm. and been aware of hooks and and yeah. things that are you know, bite-sized chunks yeah. in the chorus and stuff. Because you know? the songs aren't very long, are they? They're like two and a half, three and a half minutes. Most of them, of yeah, yeah shorter than usual. Length. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So there's no there's no no sprawling uh, no. prog rock classics in there. No. <laughs> Although you'd think I'm describing a prog rock album, <laughs> what I've said so far. But yeah, so, yeah. So it's a yeah. Mm. Do you have any any particular favourites yourself on there? Um, sorry about this. <laughs> lovely artwork by my daughter. Yeah, show you that off. Yeah. That getting this back was lovely. That was like. Opening and Lad Insane, or For Your Pleasure, or some of my early kind of albums. Because we've never had a gatefold. We had a couple of album vinyls on early yeah. Batman stuff. Yeah. But never had a gatefold and never printed the lyrics either. Ah. I thought, well, I'll spoil it's... myself this time. Yeah. And um, it, it was a question before, wasn't it? Wasn't it? My old favourites. <laughs> That's what I had to look. I, don't, I haven't really got. I haven't got. I no. Don't know. No. Mm. No. Depends what mood I'm in. Yeah. No favourites. Yeah. Um, you've got Matador Repents. Where where did where did that one come from? So this is about ah. a Matador seeing the error of his ways. Yeah, I mean, on the surface, it, it's um, that, that's what it is, <coughs> and and strongly anti bullfighting as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Again, the, the specific and the general, generally it is about, it's just, it's a man coming to the end of his life, re looking back, realising it's ugly, worthless, mm. but it's pinned specifically on this um, matters or inviting himself to be gored because he looks back and finds it all filthy and rotten and mm. horrible. And we played... We played a long way, long way back. It was just me and half, so it was very early loins. Um, we played this festival in Spain, mm -hmm. and they put us up in this village for a couple of days. And it was it was a lovely place. They were they were great people. But we went into a bar, and so just lunchtime. They were just they were just watching bullfighting. I'd never seen bullfighting before. Yeah. And we watched it on the telly, and it was grotesque, really grotesque. Mm. And the matter was doesn't even face the bull until the bull is half dead. You right. know, and it was really revolting watching this. And, and that's a regular thing to be shown on telly? Yeah, this was just on daytime telly. This was yeah. a couple of old blokes 
I don't think the young people were very interested in it, but the couple of old blokes sitting around there watching it. And I, I had these kind of romantic notions about the ballet of it and the grace yeah. and the power and the bravery. Mm. There's an element of that, but the 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 bull is so lowered, so demeaned, so wrecked mm. before he even gets to him. That, mm. um, I thought, well, I can I can get in a bit of anti bull fighting pin this universal theme on it of dissatisfaction and, and throw in the mix and that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Out of the blue This is a soul Right there In the eyes of it A thing he never saw before In the glorious Exhausted misery And that's, that thing is what Katie picked up on, because I didn't, um, I mean, that is a tremendous, I mean, there's other oh, symbols from other souls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, that is the dissatisfied kind of man, bull. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the sunflowers are from another song. Mm. And this character here, I mean, that's just... I don't know, that's a, whatever that is, it's a great symbol. Mm. And she kind of got it. She just, she listened to some of the um, demos that we'd done and read the lyrics and stuff and came up with several ideas and that's the one that we selected. Yeah. So I'm very proud of it. Mm. Yeah. That's a uh, yeah, really powerful, powerful image. Um, and then the choir boy and the crow. Oh, yeah. It's quite a disturbing tale of mm. a predatory relationship with a choir boy. Yeah, it's the curse at the end of the album, the 13th song. <laughs> um, yeah, the crow cropped up in a couple of songs on stuff, or at least one song on stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, now this is just, it's just literally having fun and, and the narrator being the crow and yeah. deciding to pick this little pink choir boy and fuck his life up. Because mm. you were a choir boy. I was, I was a choir boy. Yeah. <laughs> He's the sort of biographical. <laughs> well, there are elements in there, there are elements. <laughs> I was a choir boy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, All Saints, Finsbury. Ah, okay. <laughs> but um, John Lydon was a choir boy. Yeah. And. Uh, Other people, I've forgotten that. Someone else got a mind and went again. Mm. Yeah. Right. Keith Richards. He was Keith good. Richards. It's good training. It, it was good. It is good training. I can't read the right music. Mm -hmm. and, and But cramming all those hymns in you, it certainly teaches you about melody and structure and, and learning these songs. And you come out the other end. Um, with a lot more knowledge than you th thought you... I mean, I, as soon as my voice broke, I stopped. Yeah. Because I didn't... I wasn't any good as an alto, and I was also falling out of love with the church. I was quite religious at the time mm -hmm. as well, quite weirdly religious. Mm -hmm. And um, various things happened that put me right off that. I'm, I'm atheist now. Um, but no, that was... Yeah, it's... Um, yeah, the choir boy and the crow. Mm. A curse. A curse. Now he caught me grinning and swallowed the bait, yes. Mistakenly thinking I was his mate. But we don't make good pets, boy. We pluck ourselves sick. And I know enough words to insult you, you prick. So th that isn't something I'd, I'd picked up on before, but, you know, these recurring themes of the moon and, and, and the crow. No, it's, um, I'm not quite sure I had until I sat down and watched it. Even, like, Still All at Sea 
to me, that's a continuation from... I'm not sure I've quite realised it, but looking back, it seems to me now that it's a continuation of... Um, Monsters Ashore from here on Earth, right. which is the one where this mad crew are setting sail mm. because the monsters are ashore and they'd rather go into the fog and the storm yeah. of that. Yeah. <coughs> and um, so still all at sea, to me, is like the captain of that ship from okay. uh, Monsters Ashore strapped to the... Strapped to the... Uh, <laughs> just his skeleton left. <laughs> still strapped to the mast. Yeah. Trying to sing. <laughs> That's kind of what that is. First time up, it's flesh is green. And it's time. Less of a concept album, more of I don't know the the the, the second part of a a story. Yeah, it appears so. I, this is nonsense. It? <laughs> I'm talking absolutely nonsense, but no, but those things all whiz around in yeah, your head. Yeah, and, uh, it's and you it's, don't necessarily notice at the time, but then. Yeah, yeah. Some I did. Some some I knew I was bringing um, old kind of symbols in, but some of it. No, reading back. Uh, Suddenly, when I realised there were lots of there's lots of cross pollination, but then there would be the last album was my concern six years ago. They're not very different now, mm. so the words are going to have certain themes and concerns, I suppose. Yeah, it's what one is. <laughs> so um, plans for the future, I guess. Uh, th there might be a new album at another time, or there might not be. It's probably a bit too early to say, yeah, I'd I imagine. It's probably a bit too early to say at yeah. the moment. They're, they're, they're rather mysterious, the singing line, especially to me. <laughs> There's something, when we get together, that grit yeah. in the oyster certainly can come up with a pearl or two, but, yeah. um, but it's all a mystery, and, and how we work, I don't know. And, you know, yeah. uh, when we'll be singing together in the same room, I, 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 I have no idea. Okay. But uh, who knows, five years down the line, if any of us are still alive, <laughs> I might phone them up again. Yeah, well, I think that the results from, from this this time round have been uh, spellbinding. It's it's a fantastic album. Well, thanks very much. Thank um, you. Yeah. Uh, and that was, I mean, it, it definitely wouldn't have seen the light of day if we thought we'd gone downhill <laughs> mm. um, so no I'm pleased I'm pleased with where they where the songs went and, and yeah 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 great well it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you is it it has <laughs> <laughs> uh, well I'm glad it was short fuck off <laughs> Um, yeah, so so uh, th thanks for um, sparing the time to chat. Um, thanks for coming man, I'll it's, jump. It's all right. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, next time you're doing anything, I'd love to find out what it is. And, okay. Uh, yeah, that's great. Thanks. thanks very much, Chris Rogers. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Stop.